hello everyone so today we'll be continuing from our last lecture that is the market trading systems so uh, in the last lecture we talked about this cap and trade we defined what is cap and trade uh, as uh, market trading system so uh, today we have planned to uh, describe what is the cap and trade example certain examples will be taking into account then we'll be uh, explaining the marginal saving functions uh, as polluting functions then how to determine the price per permit or how to determine the permit price that we'll be explaining and uh, then we'll be discussing uh, the uh, difference uh, between this emission tax and the cap and trade and finally we'll be discussing the last mechanism of uh, this uh, market based trading that is the liability okay and we, are, we will be discussing what are the mechanisms of the liability and how this liability can also provide economic incentives okay so let's start with some of the examples of cap and trade so as you understand in cap and trade the government puts a cap or upper limit and that allows trade among the polluting entities okay so now we can take this example suppose uh, the government has uh, introduced a cap the upper limit of the emissions and uh, this trade scheme then uh, will reduce the amount of this emissions so now let's take an example of cap and trade suppose say the government has introduced this uh, scheme cap and trade scheme in order to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions Uh, that are emitted from the power plants okay and uh, uh, here the current total emissions that is estimated is 150000 tons for year right and uh, the policy makers how they obviously want to reduce this level of emissions from this 150000 tons per year to 1 lakh tons per year right so this is the cap the government has fixed and um, obviously here uh, in this uh, emissions there will be lots of farms in this industry power industry power plants industries so we can take uh, one single power plant right and uh, this one single uh, power plant it is currently emitting 5000 tons of emissions this greenhouse gas emissions per year right and uh, under this cap and trade the upper limit upper limit that is fixed for all the industries at a macro level or in total the government needs to uh, reduce this emission level from 1 lakh 50000 to 1 lakh uh, tons uh, per year however for individual uh, industries this cap uh, provision is fixed that means a permit is allowed till 2500 tons of emissions per year right so here for individual farm the cap is fixed that is uh, the individual farm can emit 2500 tons of emissions per year right so in this case now the question is what are the strategies that needs to be adopted by the particular industry here so uh, now the this power plant manager he would be thinking about some alternatives so what are the alternative choices available in this situations let's see it. so when uh, the the power plant it was uh, it is uh, right now producing 5000 tons of emissions per year and government has permitted till 2500 tons of emissions per year right so in this context the manager would be having uh, some alternative choices so what are the alternative choices the first can be the manager would be thinking to reduce the emissions to the initial permit level that is 2500 tons per year so that means simply to reduce from 5000 tons of emissions to 2500 uh, tons of emissions per year so this is the first option that reduce the emission to the uh, permission level the second one could be and uh, the uh, the the manager would be thinking that let's maintain let's continue with the same 5000 tons of emissions per year 
but obviously the upper limit is 2500 that is allowed limit. So, for that reason the additional permit needs to be purchased. So, what is the additional limit? How much? So, it is uh, 2500 is permit level and it is uh, right now it is continuing with 5000. So, obviously additional permit of 2500 uh, tons per year needs to be purchased. Right. And this the third alternative choice is that the uh, the manager can think of to reduce the its its emissions below the allotted limit. So, what is the bill, uh, what is the allotted limit 2500 uh, tons per year right. So, now the manager would be thinking to reduce this emission level below 2500 uh, tons per year and the surplus can be sold in the market ok. So, this this is the three and different alternative choices in the scenario of the cap and trade. So, now we can take another example right. So, let us assume a situation where two polluters are there. So, what the government is interested to reduce the pollution that uh, the government can allow maximum 100 units of pollution from both the industries ok. And then now the government is thinking that let us uh, let us start with uh, 50 permits for each of the polluting industries. So, in this case what would be the marginal savings from polluting functions for both these uh, firms? So, let us talk about firm 1 and firm 2. So, we can find that uh, if in the horizontal axis we are uh, we are uh, depicting the, uh, the permits hold and in the vertical axis the price for it right then we are saying that this ms1 is the marginal saving functions for firm 1 right and uh, this ms2 this line right is the marginal saving function for firm 2 right and uh, th and for for uh, the initial point for the first firm firm 1 is starting from 0 till 100 and for the second firm the where we are we have depicted this marginal saving uh, MS2 the initial point for uh, second firm is starting from here it is 0 here and it goes on till 100 right. So, in this exercise and the equilibrium price for permit to uh, pollute is determined by the intersection point of this marginal saving function of the first firm and the marginal saving function of this second firm and at this point of intersections we are finding this E star is the equilibrium holding of permit right. And corresponding to this E, e star the price is uh, known as the permit price right. So, now the equilibrium price that is P star is the permit price and E star is the equilibrium holding of the price uh, holding of the permits right. And now, if you are thinking of a pollution tax or emission fee you are saying, then when the government is going to impose any emission fee, then this emission fee would be the amount of emission fee would be just equivalent to this P star right. And so, you can say this emission fee of P star uh, is going to achieve exactly the same outcome right as the case of marketable permits right. So, this is how we can say that uh, we can compare with with uh, this um, marketable permit with the emission fee right. So, now we can find the equilibrium permit holding is E star. However, the government is deciding that only 100 permits can be allowed and for both the firms uh, the government has uh, distributed the share of this permits into 50 50. So, that in first, first firm firm 1 is all is holding 50 units uh, uh, 50 permits and firm 2 is also holding 50 permits out of 100. But what we are finding here that this equilibrium holding is E star that means the firm 1 is holding is polluting at E star which is much more than the 50 allotted permits right. And similarly 
farm to its allocated share is 50, however, it is producing much less than 50 that is at is at this E star, right. So, in this case what will happen as farm 1 is producing much more pollutions than the permitted one, then in this case the farm 1 will be purchasing this extra profit sorry extra permit from obviously farm 2. What is the extra permit? So, this level E star minus 50 is the extra permit that farm 1 needs to purchase right and obviously, the farm 2 is going to sell because it is it is um, uh, it is uh, using or it is uh, polluting E star whereas, it has the apportionment, apportionment share of 50 permits right which is less than uh, 50. So, this trading procedure it can be continued till farm 1 holds E star of permits and farm 2 will be obviously holding how much 100 minus E star of permits. So, till this point till this point is restored the, the, the transaction can be continued. So, from this what you understand is that uh, if the marginal abatement cost it is greater than permit price. So, in this case whether the farm would be would be uh, purchasing the extra permits or it would be going to sell the permits. So, when you are saying the, the marginal abatement cost is greater than the permit price then obviously, the, uh, the pollution control or reducing the pollution is a costly affair than to purchase in terms of permit price right. So, for this reason what the firm will be doing the firm will be purchasing the extra permits right and in the opposite case if the marginal abatement cost it is less than the permit price then obviously, the firm will be trying to abate more and more and and it will be selling the permits right. And in this case if you are assuming a pretty good number of firms polluting firms in an industry then this mechanisms of transactions buying and selling right it will actually push till the aggregate marginal uh, abatement cost gets equivalent to the price of the permit. So, till this point is, uh, is reached this procedure will be continued right. So, uh, here this marginal abatement cost is taken as the demand for permits and what is the supply side supply of permits. So, it depends upon the regulatory the regulating authority that how much permit is to be allowed for for the industries itself. So, this in the demand side this aggregate marginal cost it will be constituting the demand for permits and in the supply side it is it uh, supply side of the permits it depends upon the regulating authority that how many uh, number of uh, what is the amount of permits the regulating authority is going to allow. So, now after understanding this demand and supply factor supply side of the permits we can determine uh, the price and quantity uh, in the permit market right. So, as you understand the demand for permits is represented by the aggregate marginal abatement cost function of the firms and uh, the supply for permits it depends upon the quantity of permits that is allowed by the regulating authority itself right. So, if you uh, if you are drawing this representing t in a graphical manner then we are finding this this is the aggregate marginal abatement cost which is the demand for permits ok and this SP is the supply for permits which is fixed by the regulating authority how many uh, permits are allowed or what is the unit of pollution to be allowed. So, in this case 
uh, the intersection point of your demand for permits and the supply for, of permits right. Uh, here, uh, so, intersection point is here. So, the equilibrium quantity is q 1 ok. So, this and the equilibrium price is p 1. So, what you can say that in this case q 1 is the supply of permits right. <coughs> And uh, and uh, that is how, how we are saying the price per per meter per missed price is P1. Okay. So in this case, if the government after finding that this is the equilibrium Q1 and equilibrium price is P1, then if the government would be thinking to even restrict or even reduce. Um, further reduce the pollution amount, then obviously it will be providing less number of pollution permit in comparison to the initial pollution per, uh, permit that is SP, right? So, so if uh, uh, the government is taking some restrictive uh, uh, permit, right? From reducing from the first, the original state of permit is SP, and now it is reducing further then uh, the quantity will be fixed or the equilibrium quantity will be determined by the intersection point of this supply curve this is S p dash with the demand curve uh, of the uh, pollution permit. So, at this point we are finding the q 2 right uh, this is the quantity and uh, the, per, the price against this q 2 would be the P 2. So, the permit price would be P 2 and permitted quantity would be Q 2. Okay. And likewise, if suppose say the demand curve uh, for the permit, it shifts upward like this. Okay. Then what will happen? So, obviously, in case of this first supply curve, now the demand curve is shifting. So, obviously, the price given the quantity, the same quantity is there, same quantity of, uh, of permits would be there. However, the price would be rising from P1 level to this level. Okay. So, likewise, if you are talking about this, the second supply curve, now the demand curve has shifted. Okay. So, now for the second one, the equilibrium point of intersection would be this and again given the same amount of permit Q 2 the price would be rising from P 2 level to this level. Okay. So, in this case the cost effectiveness in trading, trading of this permit right it requires that there would be a single market and single price of the permit right. And all the transaction plants uh, who are involved in this particular transactions, so they will be trying to equate this marginal abatement cost with this single price. So, if it is for the first case of limit, if it is uh, this P1, then all these plants they will be trying to equate their marginal abatement cost to this price level. Okay. So, that means you are saying this equi marginal principle will be uh, followed. So, if you are talking about two firms, then we will be saying this marginal abatement cost of the first firm would be equal to marginal abatement cost of the second firm that is equal to the P 1. Okay. So, now let us understand the, the difference between this emission tax and the cap and trade. So, in, in our earlier uh, discussions, we have understood what is the emission fee or emission tax. So, in case of the emission tax, what you are finding? You can just remember the, uh, the case of emission fee. So, in this case, this uh, under this emission fee, the marginal cost of emission control, it can be known precisely. Why? Because when you are paying the fee, then obviously, the cost of controlling the emission is known right and when you are going to 
reduce one more unit of uh, pollutions, then you have to pay some additional amount of cost. Okay. So, that is how the marginal cost of emission control is uh, it can be precisely known under the emission fee. But so far as the quantity of pollution is concerned, right? So, in under this emission fee, uh, this quantity of pollution is less sure to be determined. Whereas, in case of marketable per permit, you can just remember what happens here the upper limit or the permission for the uh, pollution is granted, right. So, that means the amount of pollution it can be known, but which is which one would be lesser known? Then the lesser known we can find that this marginal cost of pollution control it will be less sure or will be less sure about the marginal cost of pollution control. So, why it is so? Because you know that under this cap and trade, this quantity of restrictions or what would be the upper limit of pollution, it is fixed right by the regulating um, regulator itself. And all the polluting firms they are asked to adjust their emissions uh, that determine the permit price. Whereas, in case of emission free, the per unit uh, emission fee is fixed, fixed by the uh, regulator itself, and the firms adjust their emission level. So, that is uh, that is why uh, under this emission fee this marginal cost of emission control it is known whereas, this marginal cost of uh, um, uh, whereas, the quantity of this pollution is lesser known and in case of marketable permit this amount of pollution is known, but the marginal cost of pollution uh, control is is less you. Okay. So, now let us talk about the last method. Uh, under this uh, trading that is liability. Okay. So, what is liability? So, here the basic argument of liability is that if you are doing any kind of harm to someone then obviously, you have to pay uh, pay for the damage that you are causing. That means, you have to compensate that person for the damage you have caused. Right. So, let us take an example. So, when you are talking about the hazardous waste storage management facilities right or simply saying uh, simply we are saying we are uh, when you are managing a dump right. So, so uh, the task is that when you are maintaining a dump right you need to take certain steps. So, what is the steps you need to take into account you need to minimize the risk of this waste hazard. So, how to minimize this risk hazards because you are maintaining you are the owner of a dump, dump then uh, your priority or your task is to minimize the risk of hazards, but how? So, it depends on how you are taking the to what extent you are taking the precautions to minimize the risk of this hazardous waste. And you know that when you are going to take precautions it is costly affair. So, precaution is very expensive. And assuming this setter is peribus assumptions or other things uh, taken um, taking uh, constant, the uh, the farm on the dump owner obviously would be preferring to take less precaution because precaution is costly. And moreover, when the precaution is not taken, the damage to the society would be more. So, the damage to the society it depends on the precaution level that the dump owner is taking into account right. And how about both these both costs that means, to dump it is also costing you and if you are not taking into account the precaution it is also going to cost to the society. So, to dump and to, uh, to dump and whatever the damage we are getting to uh, getting and uh, the society is suffering uh, from the damage these are the functions of the level of precautions itself. Okay. But now, the thing is that what is the socially desirable level of or what is the socially uh, social optimal level of precautions that the uh, dump owner needs to take. So, you need to find this socially desirable level of precautions right we can determine it. So, this point can be determined at which the marginal cost of taking one more 
precautions are just balanced or just offset by the reduction in the marginal damage from taking more basic regulatory mechanisms and this will be giving economic incentives by reducing uh, in the marginal damage from taking one more precautions. Okay. So, uh, what is the point uh, that we are finding? So, which is known as the socially desirable level of uh, precautions. So, we are finding that point at which the marginal cost of taking uh, taking uh, more precautions it is just uh, offset by uh, reducing the marginal damage from taking um, some more basic regulatory mechanisms. Okay. So, now let us talk about how uh, this liability is also providing e economic in incentives. Okay. So, uh, you can you know that when um, you are neglecting right for this liability or negligence of the liability, it will mean the fear of being responsible. Okay. So, liability is fear of being responsible, but when you are neglecting that means you are not afraid of being responsible. Right. So, what is this uh, fear? The fear is that if any accident damages occurs. Right. And this accident damage, this, this liability, the very idea of liability that if some accident happens, then you need to compensate for that. It is actually acting as a sufficient incentives to take uh, right kind of uh, precautions, so that the society would not face any kind of damages or you can say the socially desirable amount of precaution can uh, can be taken. And because of this very idea of uh, the liability, so the polluters now they would be getting economic incentives to compensate for the damages they have generated. right? So, this is the basic understanding of a liability that if your action is creating any kind of damages then obviously, you are responsible and you need to compensate uh, the victim. So, now we need to understand what are the mechanisms of the liabilities that is leading to the economic incentives. We can take this example that how this liability principle uh, is working right by taking into account the same demand and supply concepts in of liability. So, as you understand that what is the demand curve for liability? It is the same marginal abatement cost and what is the supply uh, curve for the liability? It can be represented by your marginal damage. Right? So, we can, uh, we can uh, just uh, graphically represent this. This is your marginal abatement cost right? and this is your marginal damages. Why marginal damages are not starting from 0? because the, the nature is also having certain absorption capacity. That is why whenever the pollution starts, it may not actually affect the society, it may not actually harm or damage the society itself. So, that is why after this point of this capacity, natural, capa natural ab absorption capacity, we are finding this marginal damages. Okay. So, our task is to find out what is the uh, efficient level of liability or efficient level of uh, um, emissions. So, it is determined by the, the intersection point of this marginal abatement cost curve and marginal damage cost curve. So, this is determined at this equilibrium point. So, accordingly E star is the efficient level, level of emissions. So, here in the horizontal axis we are representing this amount of emissions and in the vertical axis we are representing the price for the same. Uh, so, this is what the society is needing, this is the societal level of emissions, it is desirable. So, how about if you are taking into account the actual level of emission, let us say the actual level of emissions is not taken place here at the societal level of emissions rather at a uh, larger extent that is at the E 1. Okay. So, obviously, this U 1 level of emission it is much more than the efficient level of emissions that is E star. right? And when we will be saying that liability rule is here, it is applicable. Uh, so, in this case what is the principle of liability? 
that means if there is any kind of damage it needs to be compensated. So, following this liability principle this damage whatever the damage it has created because of its production at E 1 emissions at E 1. So, this damages has to be internalized right. So, what is the cost if uh, the, the industry is producing at E 1 level of emissions what is the cost or what is the damages. So, damages are this this is damage function. So, this is these under these this is B area C area D area the whole of these right it is the total uh, damage damage right damage cost. So, that means, this total damage cost needs to be compensated uh, to the victim or the polluters needs to pay this B plus C plus D area of damage right. But now, the thing is that how to decrease this compensation cost because obviously, the polluter would be thinking how to decrease this compensation cost. So, now, the, uh, the polluters can decrease the compensation cost obviously, by if the uh, polluter is going to decrease the level of uh, pollution from E 1 to less than E 1 and it can continue till E star is achieved. Okay. So, polluters can actually decrease the compensation cost by reducing this emission from U 1 towards E star and uh, thereby what will what the uh, the polluter would need to do it has to go for investing in terms of abatement cost right. So, it can reduce these emissions to a point which point as long as this marginal abatement cost is less than the marginal damage. So, this portion is the marginal abatement cost which is less than the abatement this marginal damage. So, after getting here at this point marginal abatement cost is just equivalent to your marginal damage cost. So, after reaching beyond E star what you will be finding this marginal abatement cost is more than the marginal damage cost right. So, the polluter would be reducing the emissions till the marginal abatement cost is less than the marginal damage cost. Okay. So, you can say this marginal abatement cost it is less than the marginal damage cost till this point. So, now the liability would be acting as an economic incentives okay, by reducing the pollution automatically to E star level which is the efficient level of pollutions. Okay. So, this is the principles of uh, liability that if you are creating any harm or damages you must compensate. So, that is why so the polluter needs to reduce in order to give less compensation to, uh, against the damages. So, that is how it is the efficient level of productions. Okay. So, for liability portion you can uh, you can follow this books environmental economics field and field and also you can uh, follow this cold start book intermediate environmental economics. Okay. Thank you very much.